Hey everyone. Uh, today's lesson is all about the Explore, Exploit, Sustain model, which comes from uh, an awesome, awesome book by the name of Lean Enterprise. Um, it's published by O'Reilly, so um, definitely go and make sure that that one is on your reading list. Uh, but I wanted to explain this model today because we've talked a little bit about uh, personal learning um, and individual learning, and now I want to start to talk about organisational learning because um, whilst that individual uh, reflective stuff is really important. Um, I think there's there's a lot to be said for working on building an organizational learning model. So um, this particular model is super, super helpful for you to get a view of the entirety of your portfolio of work, whatever that looks like, um, in a, into a lens of how are we building a learning organization. So Oftentimes we'll get a um, we'll get portfolio dashboards. Uh, you know, I've, as you're aware, I've done a lot in the capital program type space uh, as project PMO type manager roles, and um, and that's where a lot of my clients sit is around managing this capital portfolio. Um, so it's a really natural thing to look at the, the all of the work that's in your capital works program in terms of like how are we starting to make change as an organisation. Um, but often we'll get those dashboards through and there's a lot of reporting on time, cost and quality performance. Your traditional project management kind of iron triangle. Um, hopefully now we're getting uh, more organisations that are looking into what's the impact that we're really having for our stakeholders and our customers. So maybe we're starting to have some conversations about benefits that are delivered um, to the business or even value for customers. Uh, and potentially starting to look at uh, strategic alignment of programs, so how, how things are, are lining up with strategy. So that's all well and good, but the question we want to answer today is how does that place us in terms of building a learning organisation? Because if we're looking at project performance, which is a very um, you know, commonplace kind of way to look at our portfolio of work, it's great, but it doesn't tell us what we're learning as an organization. It doesn't tell us how we're building that muscle for learning within our organization and how we're actively encouraging different work methods, um, experimentation and hypothesis driven design. Um, are we accelerating our learning? Like at what rate are we learning? Are we are we accelerating? Are we decelerating? You know, how are we building that responsiveness for change in our environment, in our internal or external world. Uh, and so this model is about taking all of that uh, work that you've already got that's in place and simply changing the perspective slightly to say, okay, how does this enable us to learn as an organization, this work, whether it be the content of the work itself or the process by which that work comes into being. And so the model is super, super simple. Um, I've explained this before I'll, and I'll explain it again. Um, but there's a lot of information out there about this model. So explore, exploit, sustain. Three super simple categories. And all you're going to do is take your existing work today and start to look at where does that work fall within one of these three categories. So first up, exploration. This is about where um, we may have an idea for a new product, a new service, a new way of working, and we're not too sure whether or not it's going to have the impact that we expect yet. We're going to go through some kind of exploratory phase. Now, in most organizations, that'll look like writing requirements documents, doing designs, with those sorts of activities. But really, at its core, exploration is about what's the smallest thing that I can do to test whether or not my idea is going to have the intended impact that we're looking for, whether that be in terms of um, monetary type values, cost efficiencies, productivity, revenue growth for our business, uh, or value for customers. Like, is this something that customers actually want? Um, maybe we're prototyping products, those types of things. So exploration is about how do we start to explore those ideas? And you will likely have a bunch of projects or pieces of work um, that you could say legitimately, we're not too sure exactly the impact that this is going to have, but they can all sit in the explore mode. And then your second category is about what are we exploiting? So having understood that this is the thing we're going to do by whatever process we do today, and in most organizations today, that's probably some kind of business case process. Now we're in some sort of delivery mode and we're trying to 
exploit this idea that we've got for betterment. We're in the process of building. We're investing a lot more time and energy than we were in that experimentation exploration phase. We're starting to really put some resources behind it because we want to exploit this idea for um, the betterment of our business and our customers. And so exploration is probably a bunch of projects that you've got in progress today. And then step three is about what are we, what's in sustain mode? Um, I liken this in a traditional um, org structure around what, what's our operations day to day? What is, what's the stuff that's just the way we do things around here? And there'll be a whole bunch of work that's sitting in that part of your portfolio. Um, what's really nice about this model is that you can start to bring in your operations in uh, in addition to your portfolio of capital work. So you're starting to just dip the toe in the water a little bit around relating your project portfolio to your operations. Um, you know, it's one of the problems that I'll work with quite frequently with clients is around, based on the projects that we're doing today, that's going to have an impact on our operations and how do we start to get visibility of that. This model helps you to do that by having this category around what's in sustain mode. This is the stuff that we're not changing. It's just the way we work around here. Um, you know, that's that's very sort of slow moving change. Maybe we're tweaking around the edges, but largely the thing is staying the same. So those are your three categories, explore, exploit, sustain. So the first thing you want to do is to take all of the work that you've got on your plate and divvy it up along those categories. And then once you've got that visibility, then you can start to see how are we placed for organizational learning? Do we have a whole bunch happening in sustain uh, mode and not a lot that's coming through the pipeline? Ideally, we'd like to have a whole lot of little things in the exploration phase. And when I say little, I'm talking about maybe a half-day experiment with two to four people where they're going out and learning something. Ideally, we have a whole bunch of ideas that are constantly sort of feeding through and filtering through this exploration process. And then in the middle, we have some projects that are built on that data. And so once you've got that, that visibility, you've got an initial look at where are we spending our time and energy, from the perspective of learning. Because if I walk into a client and I see a whole bunch of uh, little pieces of work in that explore phase, then my first instinct is to say, cool, okay, so we're, we're actively going out there and seeking and building awareness. It's probably a good thing in terms of focusing effort on building a learning organization. If, however, I see a whole bunch of stuff in the sustain mode and a whole bunch in exploit and not a lot in ex exploration, then Again, we're probably kind of too heavy on just doing the things we, we do today and the way we do them today. Maybe we need to sort of jazz that up a little bit. So that's sort of the first perspective that it gives you. And then the second layer that you get to, to bring into all of this is how well are we doing that exploration and that exploitation and that sustainment phase? And what I mean by that is what, what categorizes a piece of work in exploration versus a piece of work that's in exploit? What happens for a piece of work to move between those columns? If we were looking at a board that said from left to right, <laughs> uh, what, what's, what is it that triggers a piece of work to move from exploration into exploitation? What's, what's that process? Um, and I'd argue that if it's your business case process, then a lot of that work that's in exploration is probably far too big. To, to genuinely be sitting there. And so you might start to look at how can we invest a smaller amount of our time and energy into understanding whether or not this work is going to have the impact that it needs to. Because everyone knows writing a business case is a lot of work for your organization. Maybe not for you directly, but for your teams. It's a lot of work to go through that process of building all of this up, only to then you know, potentially be, be set back to the, to the drawing board. So that secondary layer of how well are we operating in each of these areas can be really helpful to start to improve. Um, so not from the perspective of we're you know, beating ourselves up that we're not doing well, but how do we get better at exploration? What does it look like if instead of spending time and energy on gathering requirements and filling in all those cost tables, what if we said actually that's too much investment and we want to go the stage before? And what is that half day, couple of people, um, figuring out whether our idea is going to have the impact or not, how do we start to cultivate more of that type of exploration in our organization so that actually when we get really good at doing that exploration, business cases become almost like 
that level of investment, you're already in exploitation phase, right? Because you're starting to invest a lot more time and energy into that. And you want to have some, some reasonable data to say that, yep, this is worth our time and energy. And so you'll start to notice that your tolerances and your windows start to shift um, as you get this view of your portfolio and as you start to focus time and energy on improving each of those phases. So that's the model. Explore, exploit, sustain. Super simple. Um, step one, take all of the work that you're doing today that you've got visibility of and put it across those three categories. Start to get that picture of how are we building a learning organization? How well are we understanding that learning, that continual learning process within our organization today? And then layer two, how well are we operating in each of those phases? Like what does it actually mean to move between these phases? What do each of these phases feel, like, look like in our organization today? And how can we improve those? So that's the model. I hope you found it useful. <laughs> and uh, yeah, go away, apply it, put your work into that model, see what it looks like to build that learning muscle. And I hope wherever you are in the world today, you're having an awesome, awesome day. I will see you again real soon.